Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to, to make me feel normal. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if normal exists, but I know what yeah, you mean. Yeah, yeah. I know yeah, what you mean, for yeah, sure. I, hear um, I started people's uh, origin stories. Tell me about yourself. Where were you born and raised? Uh, I was born in Glendale, California. Um, my, uh, my grandparents uh, uh, have a, a children's bookstore there in, Pas in Pasadena. I was raised for a very short period of time in Glendale, California, and uh, I don't want to make my mother look bad, but she was a struggling alcohol or drug addict alcoholic. Um, spent some time in foster homes. Uh, she, uh, I have, a, I actually have a little brother who was born with cerebral palsy. So, um, we were in separate foster homes, but from what, from what I remember, she had like a weekend visit and, uh, decided to take us up to Alaska. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was quite, uh, from what, I, it was kind of fuzzy cause I was about eight or 10, somewhere in between the and uh, it was kind of culture shock for me. Well, uh, so real quick, when she took you, was it um, planned? Was it, no. I'll say, um, was she supposed to? No, I don't believe so. From my understanding, it was, Alaska was one of the, the last states to extradite. So um, if you know what that means, like if you got in trouble in the lower 48s, you know, um, they didn't really, it didn't, they wouldn't pay the money to, to go search for you up there. And I, I think that's one of the reasons why um, we, she decided to go up there. So, uh, and, and your brother's younger or older? Yeah, I have a younger, it's younger, younger so brother. She took both you guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, uh, from what I, and I remember being about eight or 10, somewhere around that age, and just going from sunshine to snow, 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 cold. So yeah. Did you guys fly up there or drive up there? Honestly, I don't. I don't remember. I, I don't remember. Well, how long were you guys were you there? Oh, I I spent my whole life there. Oh, I, so you I just yeah. Stayed and grew up there. Yeah, I grew. I actually I've only been down here for about ten years. Um, I have a I have a daughter, and uh, her mother, my daughter's mother is from this area, so it kind of is what brought me down. So. Well, so when you got up there, did you get plugged into school and all that stuff? Uh, yep. Yeah, I went to I went to school up there, and uh, we moved around quite a bit, you know, because my mom was a she was still a struggling uh, drug addict and alcoholic, but um, she uh, she eventually got her her stuff together and. Uh, raised both me and my little brother up there so she, I, I think she did a pretty damn good job considering I'm homeless but um, I'm a good person I, I pride myself in my kindness and respect for others um, and you went to high school there and yep I went to high school did a little bit of college uh, a little part of Alaska what, what so now? so when we first moved up um, when we first moved up, we were on the peninsula. So uh, we lived in Anchor Point, Alaska, which is, <clears throat> excuse me, my mother tends to get me a little teary-eyed. But um, we lived in Anchor Point, Alaska, which is a, it's this very small town right before Homer, Alaska, which is on the very tip, bottom tip of the Kenai Peninsula. Yeah, so, and that was, in. We actually lived, now it's a historical cabin. They actually have it. Yeah, it's a historical the cabin. The place you guys lived in. The cabin we lived in. Was is already a, old then. It was old then, <laughs> and, but it's a historical landmark now in Anchor Point, uh, Alaska, yeah, so. Um, and I, I didn't realize that until, I don't know, a few years before I moved, moved down here. Um, what did you guys do for fun? Oh, uh, played in the snow. We played in snow. You know, and that's that's a winter, that's an Alaska winter. Alaska winters about nine months long. Uh, sun comes up at ten, goes down at two, kind of stuff. Uh, very dark. So if if you don't play outdoors, you you get pretty. They yeah, they call it cabin f fever, is what I think they call it. Um, but yeah, I, and I you know as a kid, I I loved I loved the outdoors. You know, and so. It worked out well for me, I think. Um, 
my mom spent a lot of time taking care of my brother, so I had to uh, be pretty creative with you know my time as well. Because I, I mean, I had to I had to spend a lot of time growing growing up by myself. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I cut you off a little bit. I apologize. Yeah. No, so no. You did some high school there. So I did, I did a short period of time uh, in college. Uh, I went to college for welding, non-destructive testing. I was in the, I was in the carpenters union for a uh, number of years there. And uh, I wanted, I always wanted to be a welder. Um, and I, I tried to, to still work and go to college. It didn't, didn't work because I was in my late twenties when I went. And, um, Late twenties, maybe early thirties. I can't really remember too more, uh, too much. But um, it just did. It didn't work out with um, with with the union time. You know, they want you there all the time, every time. You know, for we worked a lot of hours. So um, it, I never, I didn't get a finish. Um, but you know, I gave it a shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lots of people don't finish college. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's uh, well with high school too. I didn't. I didn't finish. I. I didn't finish high school because I was like a few credits short to graduate and they wanted me to come back another year and I said no, oops, um, I said no. So I, I dropped out of high school and later on got my GED, you know, and I was only like two or three. I should have just, should have went back, but I never did. Yeah, so, but I got my GED and then that's how I got into college, you know, I because I had to to get into college. So, uh, well, how long did you stay? You stayed in Alaska for a while. Pretty much my, my whole life, and you yeah. Met, and well, what's going on in your, I don't know how old you are now. I, I'm 43 now. So in your 20s, what's happened? In my 20s well, this, was... You, you, sorry, you yeah. can tell me in your late 20s, you were doing the college thing. Yeah, I did my college thing. So I've been, um, in, I've been an addict pretty much my whole life, um, off and on. Uh, I remember going to meetings like knee high to my mom. So it was kind of, I got, I was in and out of A. I went to AA because I, I thought I was an alcoholic for the longest time. Well, tell me how this, when did this start? The, the, the addiction? Yeah, I want to say I, I started heroin at 17. I, I was addicted to heroin for, oh gosh, from, 17 to 27, 28. Um, I had, uh, I think I went to jail for a driving violation or a DUI. I, I didn't get my license until I was 30 uh, because of my choices. Um, so I, I got into, I had been to, I've done AA a couple times and Never really could hold, sustain any kind of sobriety just because of the people I was hanging out with, friends. So, um, and, uh, oh dear. It's hard to remember because I'm, I have that disability as well. So I lost years of my memory when I, uh, <clears throat> I was in a coma for quite some time up at Harborview. I, I was in a near fatal car accident. Uh, I was the cause. Um, well, I haven't thought about this stuff in a while, so I apologize. Totally fine. You can talk about what you want to talk about. Oh yeah, yeah, no, this is all I'm. I'm pretty uh, pretty open about my whole life. Um, just not too proud of it, you know. Um, okay, so. Did AA. I did AA for quite quite some time, and then um, ooh wee. I think I was uh, passed out at my mom's doorstep. She had an apartment in downtown Anchorage, and her neighbor mm -hmm. Raymond was. Uh, he ended up being my sponsor. <laughs> he had been in uh, AA for quite some time, and this is kind of when uh, sobriety kind of really took. You know, um, but uh, I, he chose to be my. Uh, he asked, he's like, "Hey, you ever you want to go to a meeting?" You know, and because he, he found me one one morning on a, on my mom's doorstep, and uh, I decided to go. And uh, Raymond O'Neill was his name. He was an awesome dude. 
And so that was, I forget how old I was, but that's when sobriety kind of really st stuck. And he kind of, he told me his story and, uh, man, uh, I think it was off and on. And then, uh, I found, I got a, I got a bill. I was working, I was working on a hospital in Anchorage and I got, I had gotten a bill for like $16,000 from, it was child support. I, I, I didn't know I had gotten a girl pregnant. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. You, out of like left field? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was kind of out of left field and I, I think she was still up there. I, I knew who she was and, um, why I, we had still kind of kept in touch. Well, I mean, I guess my question is, is this how you found out you had a child? Yeah, yeah. By getting a bill for child support. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, for like $16,000. What did yeah. that feel like? Um, it was, it felt pretty good because I, I to be honest with you, I wanted to be a father. Uh, it kind of, I did not think that that's the way I'd go about doing it, but um, I, uh, yeah, I, this is going to sound silly, but I, you know, I, I wanted to be a father cause I didn't have one. I didn't have one really growing up. So, um, I thought getting a girl pregnant <laughs> would be a great way to do that. Um, and so we kind of had kept in, she had, she had came down here to her parents lived up North. I didn't know this at the time. Like I had no idea where I thought she lived. I, she was Alaska native and, uh, I thought she was from Alaska and, uh, she wasn't, um, and then she had came back up. We had somehow contacted each other. We found out and, um, she did not want me to have anything to do because of my choices. I was, a, I was a drug, you know, I was an active drug addict, um, alcoholic. Um, I, I don't, I don't blame her for it, but, um, it was one of the reasons why I got my 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 stuff together was because i i finally i knew i had a child and uh <clears throat> so that was another round of sobriety you know and um a girl yeah uh, she's uh she's 13 her name's asher she's an she's an amazing um and i i ended up getting full custody i uh we, yeah we had uh some we had some battle back and forth um she doesn't struggle with uh drug addiction or alcoholism uh, a little mental illness issues, but, um, so she, I had got into a custody case with her up in Alaska. Um, she decided to come back down here to her parents. I had to pretty much fly to come down here, uh, with, with my daughter. So, so, um, yeah, that was really hard for me because I, I had weekend visits and I, she lived in, uh, I was living in Anchorage. She lived in uh, she lived in Kenai Peninsula, which is on kind of where I grew up. And I, I remember I used to have to drive six hours when I had weekend visits. I would drive down there six hours there, just for the weekend. And uh, my mom, a really good friend of the family, she was she was actually my Sunday school teacher. Became good friends with my mother. Uh, was helping. I didn't have a license at this time. Remember, I didn't have my license, so I was in my till I was 30 years old and she would drive me six hours down we'd get my daughter bring her back up I'd spend the weekend so 12 hours round trip every weekend I did that and then uh, something happened where she she um, she struggled with housing there decided to take my daughter her her and my daughter down here and that's kind of what brought me down uh, we started a custody case here in Everett I, I ended up getting full custody because I had my my shit together. I worked for Boeing at the time, and um, and so you were sober, sober, had a job, had a place. Yep. Yeah. Well, I didn't. Ha I, I. Yeah. No. I. I had a place. Um, was working for Boeing at the time. I was a triple seven in tank wing mechanic for them, and um, it was going well. And I. I, had, I ended up getting full custody. I. I still do have full custody of my my child. It's just she doesn't. I'm homeless and uh, we'll, we'll kind of get to the point of what brought me here, but uh, yeah. But so you, so at that time you got full custody, now she's living with you. Yep. How old is uh, she, at, at three I got, oh, I got, at three I got the full custody and uh, you know, she, she was the, she was the, 
she was my world, you know, still, still is to this day. Uh, it's just, she's not here with me. I mean, well, I have, actually today's my daughter's ninth birthday. Oh, congratulations. In a couple weeks, my daughter will turn 11. Yeah. So I have two little girls. And oh, cool. everything to me. Yep. So I can. You understand. So, yeah. So, yeah, and um, that was, that would kept me sober for a long time. You know what I mean? And um, I had uh, custody from three. She went back to live with her mother. Uh -huh, sorry. Uh, at, a, at, a, at 11. I'm, during COVID. I think this was 2018. We were about a year into COVID. So that'd be 2020, 21. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. 2019, 20. I can't remember. COVID had just started. It was getting weird. COVID was... COVID started beginning of 2020 okay so then because it's 2024 now she i my daughter i haven't i haven't spoke to my daughter in three years yeah and um my mom got um she died of lung cancer uh she had hospice she lived up in cedra woolly mount vernon area and um hospice during covid i, I couldn't even go in uh, so i it was really, it was really, really hard for me. I, I ended up going AWOL, um, hence why I haven't spoke to my daughter. I, I think I tried once or twice, and <clears throat> I wasn't, I wasn't in any, um, I wasn't in a very good uh, mental state to be. It, it, this is gonna, say, it sounds like an excuse to me, but I wasn't in a good place to be a parent. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you recognize that and are accepting that. Yeah. Um, and did that have to do with you just weren't able to see your mom? Um, yeah, that had it. Because it, it, it was kind of, she was my number one uh, fan, I guess. You know what I mean? She, she put up with all my shit, excuse my language, put up with all my crap and... Yeah, that had a lot to do with it. Yeah, sorry. No, I'm sorry. Take your time and yeah. Told yeah, her. she was my number one fan, and uh, when she passed, boy, I took it hard. Hence, you know, I was uh, I was dating a um, at the time I was dating an um, Eastern European woman, and. Uh, you know, she uh, she spent how we kind of met was she spent I was doing I was helping a buddy my buddy of mine was doing an eight story in Bellevue when my mom got sick so I was I was living here in Queen Anne and and every other day I'd I'd go up and visit my mom via you know front window because I couldn't go in because of hospice and um and it it was really it was really hard for me because. Um, you know, I wanted to be there all the time. You know, I wanted to be in her in her house. You know, taking care of her, and I, I couldn't even do that. So, um, um, yeah, and it was just I remember it, it was weird because we were doing COVID, and we had to I had to check in with work every day, do the whole COVID weird check in thing, and uh, and then uh, when she passed, I I, I man I. I, I told my girlfriend at the time, well, then let me get back to what we were talking about. She had spent a, a, a winter with two guys, me and my best friend, Nate. Um, we grew up in Alaska together. Well, not grew up, but I mean, he's from Michigan and we spent our early 20s all the way until our 30s in Alaska. And she, she spent, um, you know, uh, a winter around a campfire hearing all these stories from these, you know, two guys from Alaska, and she was just, she was absolutely just taken by some of the stories that we had, and we ended up dating, and so we were dating when this happened, and she was a big supporter for, you know, I, I don't know what I would have done without her uh, when my mom passed, but she was going through a bankruptcy, and she had just gotten through a bankruptcy, and we decided when my mom passed to just get on the road i you know there was a couple of things that i wanted to do um when she when my mom passed i i didn't want to be anywhere 
he, around here where I rem remembered her. Yeah, it was, it was just too much. And my drug use uh, skyrocketed, you know, because of that. And so that's how you coped. Well, yeah, yeah, that's how I coped. And, and so what I thought what I thought would be a good idea was to, to, to get out of the place of where I knew to get drugs and the people I knew and just just get out. Looking back at it now, it was kind of me running, you know, and I realized, but it uh, it definitely slowed down my drug use. And, and where's your daughter at this time? She's a show. Oh, uh, when my mom got sick, I, uh, I uh, talked to her mother. Her mother was in good, uh, had, a, had a, an apartment. She had a child with someone else. So she's a, she's a good mother. Um, and um, I felt it be better for her to go stay with her while this is going on. Yeah, and I, I'm, I apologize. I didn't mean to. Don't apologize, Yeah, one of the reasons that's uh, my traumatic brain injury is that, like, if I think about it, I tend to just jump, stop whatever I'm talking about, and no, talk like, it's about totally it. totally fine. Like, I'm tracking. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I try to stay in good spirits considering, you know, that's considering where I'm at and what I. I'm doing to survive. It's, I, it's, it's my spirits that are the only thing that keep me going. So, at what point did you become unhoused? Unhoused. Uh, so, when I had came back, I had actually, I was coming back to Washington. I from broke. That road trip? Yep. From the. And this is almost like a year and a half long. Oh we, yeah, we traveled all all the way up to Maine, and uh, she was working. Of course, I, I'm on disability because of my car accident. That happened in 2017. So um, my daughter was in the car. She was in a car seat. Um, I'm gonna get. I'll get, jump back to this. She was in a car seat. She was. She only got it had a scratch on her forehead about that big. Spent one night in the children's hospital. It took her 45 minutes to get out of the car. Out of the car. Um, I got to meet the paramedic who saved my life. His name is Ryan as well. Um, it took me, the, them, I think five and a half hours to get me out. Uh, I was dead on impact. Um, I, I, I was flatlined. Um, they took me to Everett Hospital. I had uh, multiple last, I, I was pretty beat up. Um, they realized I had a head injury, so flew me to Harborview. And I was in a coma for like a month, over a month there while they're, yeah. Uh, I had like 12 major surgeries. Anyway, so yeah. I forget where, what we were talking uh, about. came back from that road trip. Yeah, I came back. Oh yeah, I came back from the road trip. Uh, I had my truck. I might have pressed a button on that, the, the audio. I, is it still there? I don't know. Look at the numbers. Oh, okay. Look at the numbers still going? Yeah. Yep. And so um, my truck was stolen in Portland. Uh, I ended up, that's how I became homeless homeless because they actually consider having a vehicle, you're not considered homeless if you have a vehicle to live in, which doesn't make sense to me. But um, so my truck was stolen. And you by yourself? Or yep. This? No, I because me, me and her had broke. I broke up with her in Florida. I uh, we were in Florida, and that's uh, we were trying to figure out a place that we liked both of us, and it just it didn't it wasn't working. I broke up with her in, in Florida. Um, I decided to come back through California. I was homeless in San Diego for a little bit, but I'm, I had my vehicle at this time. And, um, I got made it all the way to Portland cause I was homeless in Corvallis uh, and, and Salem, which I really liked to Oregon. I liked Oregon. Oregon is the infrastructure is way more. It's starting to rain. Yeah, okay. Uh, it was way more, uh, designed for living out of your vehicle than Washington. Um, but I had had my truck stolen in Portland. I ended up, I was staying at the mission in, near Burnside. I'd been there for a couple weeks and I somehow, I, t I had told my ex-girlfriend, the Eastern European woman, that I was staying in a mission that my truck was stolen. She flips out, uh, 
she says there was because we were we were financing it. There was a tracker on it, so she ends up calling a good friend of hers, which uh, I met at her uh, church. Um, younger man, but uh, he was in construction as well. We kind of we were kind of buddies. Uh, called him up, told him the story, and he dropped everything, came down and picked me up, and we called the police. They uh, and the people we were financed from was able to find the truck. The pe tracker. yeah, the tracker and the people the people were driving the truck had all their stuff in the back. We're living out of my truck. Um, we were able to get my truck back, uh, which was I I which I would I, that was a miracle. Um, it was full of stuff in the back because it was a it was a F one fifty. So the back was just full of these people's things. I wanted to just go take it to the dump, but the, my buddy was all like, no, just leave it in. We'll do that when we get back. Just follow me home or to, to his place. And um, so I did, and uh, that kind of is what brought me back. Um, so to make a long story. So I, I was kind of messing around with a girl in Oregon on the coast. Um, I had left all my paperwork, like my custody paperwork, my banking information, well, she felt the need to take over my identity. This is kind of how I became homeless after I had my truck, because I still had my truck just up until about four months ago. And uh, took over my identity, wiped out my both of my bank accounts. Um, yeah, I'm on disability. I receive, I receive disability benefits, and they're direct deposited to one of my accounts. I had to pay back like $3,000 to one of my accounts and I was driving through Ballard when I went to fill up my gas. I could, it was empty. I, I didn't know this. It took me a couple days to figure this out, what she had done, but she had wiped out my bank account. Oh, because when you fill up gas, it wouldn't take. Yeah, it wouldn't fire. take. And so I ended up being stuck at the Safeway in Ballard for like three, four days until I could go to Key Bank and, and figure out what had gone on um the closest <laughs> anything to help me was the ballard food bank so um thank god for the ballard food bank because literally it took it oh sorry sorry it it took about three months for me it took about three months for me to to repay get my bank account back to zero to where i was receiving benefits because i so did the bank make you pay that back uh, yeah, yeah, they did because I had given her permission to use at one point. At one point, at one point. and she was, she was a friend. Well, she was someone I was dating, and yeah. So, so it took it took about three months to get that zeroed out. But at the at this time, the Ballard Food Bank was uh, the uh, vehicle outreach program they have there. Her name's Jen. She was helping me out with gas cards, so I was still able to live out of my vehicle. Um, I was eating at the food bank every day. The food, I mean, if it wasn't for the Ballard Food Bank, I honestly don't know what I, what I would have done. Um, and uh, it's kind of funny because when I was dating my girlfriend, uh, before we left, we actually stayed out at Shill Shoal Marina. So that's kind of how I remember I remembered Ballard a little bit and so I was staying out at Golden Gardens and at the marina and uh, the Ballard Food Bank was I was eating there every day and so when I had kind of got my bank account zeroed back out I was like well I'm already here you know I, I might as well stay here because I don't have family or friends anywhere else. I really I don't even have all my friends are up in Alaska and so uh, it's not like I could just drive over and stay the night at because I have friends that would have let me stay on their couch and help me get back on my feet, but they're so far away that. But right. So currently, like tonight, where are you staying? I don't know. Wherever you know, wherever I can get out of the rain, wherever that any place that doesn't kick me out, because a lot of these places they don't they don't want the homeless people sleeping or. Yeah, I, sometimes I'll stay at the Ballard uh, Library. They're the, underneath. underneath, you know. After they close, they're they're really um, they're really uh, awesome about letting people. As long as you clean up after yourself, and um, you know, you're not 
a nuisance. They'll they'll let you stay, you know, there. And, um, let's see another place. Really, that's that's the only place that really is okay with you. Uh, your daughter Asher. She she's up it. She's with her mother up in Bellingham, and she's she's comfortable and has a roof over her head and in school. I, I have, like I said, I, I haven't spoke with her in some time, and um, yeah, it's been going on about three years. I talked to her once, and her it was very quick, and I uh, she she brought up some stuff from my past that I think her mother had told had told her, and uh, I didn't agree with. I didn't think a child should have that information first and foremost. It was nothing bad, but it was just, it was personal stuff and... Inappropriate. Yeah, inappropriate for a, 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 a girl of 11 years old or 12 should should even know about. Like, you shouldn't be talking to your mother about that. And uh, I, I struggled with that and I wasn't in a good place to, to, to be able to have a conversation with her that I felt would be beneficial to her or or myself you know ultimately i i'm not talking to her because i'm i feel like i'm i'm keeping i'm trying to protect her from the chaos that is me does that make sense it does make sense and i i hear you it's not okay but i it's 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 i don't know what else to do from my experience with my girls uh -huh. they wouldn't care where i'm Right, yeah. They would just... But see, see, my daughter, she because of the accident, she, she's she's very mature for her age. She saw a lot, you know, especially with me as a single parent. I I didn't lie to her about anything. I didn't keep much for her. I was a I was an open pot smoker, you know, because I, I even though I wasn't using uh, hard drugs, I, I I smoked pot, and I was I was open about that with her. Um, so I I didn't keep much from her, and I I didn't I, even about my past use. You know, I, I wanted my daughter to understand where where I was coming from, so that she didn't have to figure this stuff out on her own. You know, and. She, she's gonna have to figure out a lot of this stuff on her own, but um, I, it's just not something that I had to keep from her, you know, so. Yeah. Um, I know she needs you. Yes. I know you need her. I am yeah, more than you know. And earlier you were saying something about I always wanted to be a dad because I didn't have one. Yeah, yeah. And, and she needs it, man. Yeah, I, I, I know. And you know that. I know, I do. And I, chaos and all is what I'm saying. I know, I know. Chaos and all. It's like, <laughs> kids would, are incredibly forgiving. Yes, I, uh, <laughs> I just, I don't want to do any more damage than I already have. Yeah, that's, uh, that sounds like shame talking to me. That's tough. Yeah. That's hard, man. Yeah. I just know from me of driving that's not the talk Oh no, it, it does. Which, it does it hence, you know, my drug use and yeah. yeah. Um that's what I, I do to uh, not forget just to well, to to numb the, the some of the decision making that I've made in the last few years. So um you know and I'm, I'm I'm at that point where I'm so sick of how how dark the streets are that I, I want to get I like I want I'm, I'm a disabled I'm a disabled single parent it shouldn't be so freaking hard to find housing I, I, I struggled with my daughter like I really did I struggled I couldn't find a place that I could afford let alone even when I had you know my daughter was with me um, and I got turned down because of, I got a felony DUI for um, you know, I had I have three DUIs, but one of them, the third one, was a felony up in Alaska because of, that's the third one's a felony. That prohibited me wow. from getting into a lot of places. So they I would, look at that, like, well, they 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 pull you know your record, and yeah. as soon as they see felon, they no questions asked. Just wow. we can't, we can't. And so I I had um, I. And at this point. I am just exhausted explaining the situation over and over. It's just, it's almost, uh, it's almost too much for me, you know. And uh, 
having the traumatic brain injury, it's my patience is very short, you know, because I not in a not always in a bad way. It's just it's sometimes my brain can't keep up with talking or explaining, and uh, it's it's frustrating. And I'm I'm exhausted half the time. Like just getting from one end of town to the other is it's like I'm already exhausted. And then if I have to explain why I'm here, or, or if I even remember why I went there in the first place. It's just, oh man, just, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's exhausting. It is hard. I'm not going to lie. Um, one last question yes, I'd like sir. to ask before we wrap up. Yes, sir. Ryan, is there anything that you want the people of Seattle to know? Um, yeah, don't judge a book by its cover. Like truly, some of these people out here are some of the most kindest, caring, smart, smartest people that I've ever met. And um, you wouldn't know that unless you take the time out of your day to ask and see how they're doing. You know what I mean? And uh, that's that's all I would ask of the people of Seattle is just don't judge a book by its cover. Thanks for sharing, Ryan. Thank it's good you, to hear your voice, man. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, hang in there, man. Thank you, buddy. Hang in there. That's good. I appreciate it. Yeah, hang in there.